Well, we're here on our V-bottom, but I don't really want to get into it too much right now. I want to show you our patron board. Now, we got a whole bunch of friends, but we got 22 new ones. Uh, Chuck Jenkins, Ron Warholic, Adam Prather, Tom King, Roderick, Ronald Bailey, Paul Johnson, David Hale, J.D. Hawksbergen, Federico DeGiulie. Now, on this side, we got Barry D. Boss, Jeff Buck, Gary Spudnik, Kashmir Armstrong, Paul Koch, who just finished building a boat, by the way, Rod Henderer, Bob McCarroll, Adam K., Garrett Oles, Ed Hinchy, Ethan, and Bob Kloss. Now, these guys really mean a lot to us right here. You are, like I said, our friends without question. You know, uh, I really enjoy looking at the board. I, I like to know that there's a lot of people backing us and different things like that. It's really great. It really is. Uh, you know, it was an idea that we had putting the names up there, and I think it was a good one. So without those names up there, I think I'd be lonesome in here. So, you know, it's, it's pretty nice. Well, check out what I got going on here now. This is my sander, and uh, I've sanded this whole boat back aft and the other side with this sander, just the way it is right here. It's kind of a new concept because uh, I needed something. I couldn't wear all the safety equipment that's necessary to do something like this and uh, feel comfortable at all. I would actually fail. So I've invented this little technique right here, and uh, I really don't need any safety equipment on. This is my safety equipment right here, especially against the dust. You know, I've got two vacuum cleaners going into it. One is just going into the surround right here, and the other one actually goes into the sander itself. I also want to show you the bottom of it here. Now, I've got this uh, random orbital sander through this hole in the top of this thing. This is made out of a gas can. So whatever dust escapes out from underneath the paper that doesn't get trapped in the exhaust on the sander itself gets into this chamber right here, and this vacuum cleaner just sucks it right up, it's gone. And there's no dust, so it works really good. Let me show you how well it works. It's funny because when you turn it on, it, you can feel it suck its way right down to the boat. Sanding's not something I do an awful lot of, and especially sand and fiberglass. And uh, I'm not one for a whole lot of safety equipment, so, you know, this thing is, like I said, my safety equipment. No dust comes out from underneath this thing, whether it's fiberglass or putty or whatever else. It just doesn't. And I don't have to wear anything but like a little face mask. I don't have any itches between my fingers, on my arms, on my face, or anything like that. And sanding in this condition, I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't believe it, but you're seeing it, and uh, I'm doing it, so... Now, as I'm sanding, I'm keeping pressure on the sander itself because I got the sander sticking up through the box. I had made another one that didn't work so well, and I pretty much threw it away before I even did any sanding because I had the sander down inside the box, and there was just no way I could make it work. So, you know, I've been playing around with this design a little bit, and this is the experimental model right here, really. You know, but uh, I didn't have to make a super-duper new one because this one's working so good. You know, I think this thing will actually work on bottom paint and all kinds of different things. So, you know, I love inventing things, and this is one of my inventions right here. And there's no problem if I hang the machine over the edge of the boat because it's got so much suction that it still doesn't get any dust coming out from underneath it. The uh, machine sits right down there nice and flat. Up forward, the boat's a little twisted, and one edge of that little container will be sticking up a little bit, but it doesn't matter. If air seeps in underneath it, it just goes into the vacuum cleaner. It actually helps the process, really. You can see that I hung one vacuum cleaner right over the boat, right in the middle, and uh, what I've been trying to do is make it easier to handle the hoses, because that's really the problem right there. So what we're prepping up for here is the application of total fare. Now, we're going to put it on real thin. We're going to actually be able to see the fiberglass behind it. Because as soon as you put anything more than a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch of putty on, well, you can't see the surface anymore, and you would have to board sand it and everything. But I've said so many times, this is just a crust. You know, it's not structural for this boat. So, you know, if uh, a little mistake were to be made or something like that, we can patch it up really nice, and uh, it just comes out beautiful. Well, we're just about finished sanding the fiberglass, and, uh, you know, what we do is sand away a little bit and then rub it with our hands, feel it with the hands, so if you've got any imperfections, you can go right back to them. 
Now, it's not board sanded. It really relies on the fairness of the fiberglass underneath it. Now, the sides of the boat, we're going to make an extra effort to keep it nice and smooth. We're actually going to fill it twice and just do the best job we can do because that's the only part that's visible of the boat when it's sitting in the water or even out of the water. And uh, the bottom doesn't have to be all that smooth. Actually, a bottom with some waves in it makes the boat go faster, not slower. So, you know, it isn't going to matter that much. And uh, I don't think you'll notice it at all. We're using good old Total Fair to accomplish this. You know, we've used this stuff for all kinds of different things, especially to fill holes and different things like that. One of the reasons why I really like it is it's a one-to-one -one mix. So you pull a big blob of the blue out and a big blob of the green out and... Uh, you know, there you go. Mix it together as best you can and don't leave any unmixed in there. And when you do scoop it out of the bucket, make sure you don't leave any of the other product in the wrong bucket. Well, this farin job right here is a little bit different than most people's because really most people would spread like a quarter of an inch of putty on here or on any boat, round bilged or otherwise. And uh, I don't know how in the world they do it because I can't be involved in doing that much sanding. You know, I'm only filling the low spots right here. I'm not putting a coat of putty over the whole boat and then trying to figure out how to get it fair again after that because you really can't. You don't know how far the boat is away, you know, because you can't see through the putty. So, you know, this system works pretty good. I'm following the fairness of the hull and just filling the low spots. It's the consistency. It's not too thick or too thin. It certainly doesn't run or do anything like that. But you can spread it three or four times and it stays workable. That's really, really nice because I can get it right down to the thinnest possible layer of ferrin that I can get. And uh, that's exactly what I want to do. I can't fare a ton of putty. I just can't do it. So this is the way we get around that. And uh, fiberglassing is something we're probably not going to be doing any of on Orca. But you'll see our machine and our ferrin and our different techniques as we go along. Well, what we're doing here now is just spreading a very thin, thin coat on there, and uh, we're just trying to fill the lows. And it does work out really nice, look at that. Stuff spreads beautiful. This will take most all the texture right out of it. All the texture that the cloth leaves just fills it perfectly. It's really not that much work because we're not putting a mammoth amount of a filler on there. Just a nice thin coat. Possibly, I'll give it another coat on the sides and touch the bottom up. I don't think I'll do two coats on the bottom, but I am on the sides because I want it to really look nice. Well, I think this is the right thing to do to the boat because I like it to look nice and smooth. I don't think it makes any difference in performance to get it real smooth. Actually, I know it doesn't, but it'll look much nicer and uh, it's worth the effort because we want the boat to come out looking really good. You know, that's the only way I get other people interested in my work is to make my work come out properly. So that's what we're up to. And uh, it's not going to be very hard. This is going to be very easy side to sand. The whole thing's very easy to sand. This putty sands, or this filler sands very easily. And the boat's nice and flat. We don't have any oddball shapes that I can't sand with my new sanding machine over there. So, this is going to really look good. And you can see how I've done this. I put all the filler right out on there because I didn't want to have it on the pallet, like I've said, and it really works nice. You don't have to waste any time with your pallet either, you know, because it really takes time going back and forth to that pallet. So, this really works good. I'm going to do everything I can up top here, just so I don't have to reach it next time. But I'm not going to quite make it here. And uh, make another mix. Nothing like it. I'm using a little rubber trowel to spread the total fare out, and it works great, but you know, if you lay it down, it kind of spreads the putty without moving any. So then if you stand it up a little bit straighter, you can kind of scrape right down to the fiberglass and move quite a bit of putty. Then after it kind of kicks off a little bit, you can go over it again and it moves it out a little bit more. 
you know, you're not trying to move any or you're not trying to, you know, get it spread out or anything. It's already spread and then you can just kind of smooth it out as it goes off a little bit. And it really helps it because you don't have to sand all that off. You'd have to sand yourself into oblivion in order to get rid of that. So this is the way to do it for me. There's actually two things going on here with the rubber trowel. I'm moving the volume that I put down there like it's a pallet and I'm also spreading it at the same time. So when I'm moving the volume, I can stand the thing up a little bit more and it kind of scrapes it down. Then I'll lay it down and see what that does. And it's kind of experimental as far as which way you push the trowel or you know what's going on there. But you know it's kind of self-explanatory when you're doing it. You're just trying to get rid of the volume and spread it out nice and flat. One of the things I'm doing here is taking all the fern compound off the pallet because a big lump on the pallet will kind of speed the way it goes off and I don't want to do that so what I do is I spread it out on the boat and I'm using the boat as a pallet it's much faster I don't have to go back to the pallet I just spread out what I've already got on there it's easier and it's faster when I started doing this job or when I started thinking about doing this job I was kind of thinking that well, this doesn't happen very often, you know, glassing over a male like this. Most boats being built in fiberglass are done in a female mold, but this is a male. And, uh, you know, then I thought, started thinking about it quite a bit. And, you know, the strip plank boats that everybody builds, they're glassed over a male. You know, canoes, all kinds of boats are glassed over a male like this. So, you know, it's not a system that wouldn't be used by someone else, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, I think you, after thinking about it quite a while, you'll find out that this is probably the easiest way to go. All right. Well, I'm just finishing up the starboard side up forward here, and I just made it. The glue didn't go off, or the ferrin didn't go off on the pallet. It didn't go off on the boat. Worked pretty nice. I'm just grabbing some from aft a little bit here because it's a little thick and spreading it out up forward. I've got a supply up above me and I'm pulling it downhill to the chine level, you see. So I'm not going parallel to the chine when I do it. The main difference between doing this like over a male and doing it inside a female is the female, all the sanding's done before the boat is built. It's all done in the female mold and it's smoothed up and then coated and uh, gel coated over that and those kinds of different things. This is so totally different than that. You know, it's a, it's a male and uh, we're not going to pull a mold off of it or do anything like that. It's just to fair it up to make it look really nice and paint out really nice. Well, this outer layer of fiberglass that we've put on here, two layers of 1708, it's, it's not meant to uh, really assist the structure, although it does. What it's meant to do is to provide like a crust on the boat so that if you bring it up on a trailer or beach it, I don't know exactly how he's gonna use this boat. So, you know, to me, it needs a crust on it because the wood that it's made out of is Atlantic white cedar and it's soft. So it would not be the best material on the outside of this boat. So it's fine for what we used it for, it's fantastic, but we don't want it exposed on the bottom. As I spread the ferrin compound and I drag it out and stretch it out a little bit, you can see the stitching that used to stitch the fiberglass cloth together. You can see right through the putty because it's so thin. And uh, I don't stop until I see that texture come up from the glass down below. Well, it's a few days later and we've done quite a bit of ferrin on the 23 footer here. You know, it was an easy thing to do because we didn't spread it on there thick. You know, we spread it on there real thin so you can see the fiberglass in, in there. And, uh, you know, it does come out very, very nicely. We've done this part of the boat more so than the bottom. So the fairing is basically complete. We're feeling it a little bit with our hands and maybe coming up with an irregularity here and there. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm just patching it up a little bit. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just you can feel lumps and I know that if you spread total protect on that without touching up some spots, you'd be able to see it when the light got on it. You know, it's funny, you can't see the imperfections now, but they're there. If you even close your eyes, you can feel around and 
fine maybe. I might put a little filler right there later on when I fill the other side, but uh, you know, it's uh, in essence, it's complete. So I think it's gonna be pretty interesting. Our next feature here is rolling this boat over. You know, I almost hate to do it because the boat looks so good this way right here, but you know, we have to roll it over. And uh, you know, it's just something that I'm probably gonna do mostly by myself rolling it over because I just don't wanna have too many chiefs and not enough Indians. So let's go back to work. Thank <laughs> you.